And I was like, fuck, show me a picture of that thing again. I sent you the fucking yeah, the shot, video. the video, yeah. right? I didn't want to put that out to the public because they fucking get sensitive. But. Well, they must have got sensitive about this too, but you ate them. Oh, yeah. That's what people don't know. Mountain I was going to bring some, dude, delicious. but I was going to bring you some, but, like, I don't know, traveling with meat. Yeah, you know, it's illegal. It's, yeah, traveling with mountain lion meat. You can't. <laughs> I was like, I don't know about that. I don't think we should be doing that. What did it taste like? It tastes like white meat pork, but sweeter. Really? Yeah. Steve Renault says it tastes amazing. It's fucking delicious. I made some chorizo breakfast sausage with it. Wow, dude. Plus, you're eating a mountain lion. Yeah. There's something yeah. going on there, too. It's fucking <laughs> something about that, right? I did I did my first bear. Dude, my first year out of retirement, I got to hunt so much. Uh, I mean, in 10 days, in 10 days in September, with my bow, I went to New Mexico, killed my first elk. That was five days, 60 miles on my feet. Just got after it. Awesome tent camping, you know? And then, um, then I went up to Wyoming, killed my first mule deer. I drove, and then I had, no, I drove straight home, had a retirement party, and then got honored at that reti- retirement party in the game, jumped in a truck and went straight to Wyoming, because I drew my general deer tag, and I fucking 50 yard shot on a double drop time fucking mule deer, wow. that we spot and stalked, we just fucking got lucky, you know, we are just out there dicking around in a field pretty much, you got lucky. Out of all the things that you can do that'll juice you up outside of competitive sports, I gotta imagine bow hunting is right at the top of that list. Dude, that... That elk, nothing. I mean, I've sacked quarterbacks in the Super Bowl, sacked Tom Brady in the AFC Championship, and the whole fucking crowd howls when you just when you stand up. I mean, it was in the New York Times front page, me standing over Tom, fucking screaming, fucking howling over him, you know, like that. But the, that feeling, it never made me want to cry, and it never made me feel like I was like, you know, I think it's because it's the turnaround to the next play is so fast, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, now next play, you know. Right. But like. To, when you have time to like actually when i shot that elk because like growing up back east poor coming on an elk hunt was just like i never i didn't even fly on a plane till i was a freshman in college mm-hmm. like, i didn't know what the fuck how i was gonna get the dodgers there. keep restarting his players and doesn't play for them anymore andrew tolls last played a game for the dodgers back in 2018 battled mental health issues throughout his life and left the organization in early 2019 eventually being diagnosed with bipolar disorder and schizophrenia in 2020, he was arrested for trespassing after police found him sleeping behind Key West. He bounced around different hospitals and homeless shelters until his father eventually took him. The Dodgers, aware of Tolls' condition, have continued to re-sign him each year so that he has access to health insurance to obtain the mental health care that he needs. Last week, the Dodgers renewed Tolls' contract for the 2023 season, five years after he last played for the organization, and have no expectation that Tolls will ever return to professional baseball again. The tip of the hat to the Dodgers organization for doing the right thing. How did the Dodgers keep
Thank you. 